Welcome everyone to the announcement of the grand prize winner of the Connex Tech Prize. This is the culmination of hundreds of hours of preparation, building, reviewing, and, and iterating from teams from across the planet, building new ventures to solve the world's most pressing environmental challenges. We have a packed audience today with our Connex Tech Prize project teams, our CXL team, some board members, some judges, and innovators throughout our community. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We're Conservation X Labs, a technology and innovation company that spurs solutions to stop the extinction crisis. We create new products in our labs, lead innovation competitions, and empower talented innovators across disciplines to collaborate and revolutionize the future of conservation. I'd like to introduce Paul Bungie, co-founder of Conservation X Labs, to say a few words and kick us off. And so I'm going to pass the mic to Paul. Welcome, everyone. I uh, am so excited about today and so pleased for all those who have joined us to learn about the winners of the Connex Tech Prize. Um, I'm Paul Bungie. I'm one of the co-founders of Conservation X Labs. And on behalf of everyone, I want to give a, a hearty and unbelievably large congratulations to everyone that participated in this year's Connex Tech Prize, uh, not, not least amongst, of course, those innovators that have shown just what is possible and what can be done but also to all of our partners, uh, to the, our judging panel, who've done incredible work reviewing and supporting. And then of course the Connex contributors this year who have done such incredible work to help out and, and, and advance these kinds of innovations. We at Conservation X Labs, we have a mission to end the sixth mass extinction, the sixth extinction of this size in Earth's history and the first to be caused by a single, single species, ours. And what this means is of course, we need to drive massive exponential change in the way we do things in order to protect planet while also sustaining a thriving civilization. What we've seen, unfortunately, are that environmental conditions and the threats to biodiversity have grown at an exponential pace, while the solutions that we have at hand are at best linear and incremental. That is one of the reasons that we fixate so strongly on innovation and even more strongly on building a community and a network of solvers and innovators from around the world that have ideas that can turn into solutions that can scale up to those world beating innovations that ultimately help us get a handle on this extinction crisis. Today, you're going to see what I think and, and most of us think are some of the most incredible ideas and incredible teams that have participated in our Connex Tech Prize to date. We began this effort, this using this type of a mechanism, a prototyping prize, with the notion that there were so many great ideas out in the world and so many great thinkers and ideators and solvers that just maybe needed a little bit of a, a, a hand in getting that first injection of money and that first injection of support that could allow them to turn that idea into reality. And, what, and asking ourselves, what could people do if they were given that little bit of support to turn it into a prototype and something that could really be transformed. And in this, our, the third annual uh, installment of the Connex Tech Prize, we've all been blown away by the absolute amazing uh, solutions that have been developed and, and showcased. This is by far the best cohort yet, and we've seen some incredible innovations in past years as well. And I can't say how excited I am to learn about who the winner is in this, but beyond that, we're actually just blown away by all of the finalists themselves and are excited as Conservation X Labs to continue working with all of these finalists because you all are incredible thinkers, incredible ideators, and incredible doers. People that are actually creating new solutions to the very threats that undermine not only biodiversity on this planet, but the, the entirety of, of, envir of the environment upon which we humans themselves survive. So I can't wait to hear who wins. I can't wait even more to see what everyone does and suffice it to say we at CXL are going to be with you every step of the way, helping everyone fly with the Eagles. Thank you very much, Paul. And that's a perfect segue. I'm gonna move straight into talking a little bit about the Connex Tech Prize, the mechanism of the actual competition itself and how it works in its three stages. So as Paul described, the Connex Tech Prize is an early stage ideas-based prototyping competition that breaks roughly into three stages. In the first stage, we're ideating and coming up with different ideas, accepting different technology ideas from across the, across the gamut um, 
to solve wicked conservation problems. And I'll talk about the categories of this year's Connex Tech Prize and the types of projects that we're seeing this year. Then in the prototyping period, 20 of those teams are granted the $3,500 each to develop a prototype of their bold conservation idea in a rapid prototyping period of 12 weeks. And then finally, the point that we're at now, the finish line, one of those teams is awarded $20,000 to take their idea and bring it to the next level. So this is the culmination of not just 12 weeks of work for the teams that have been working hard to prototype, create their first prototype, but it goes far beyond that for some of these ideas have been um, have been sitting around and have been getting initial traction for uh, much, much longer. And certainly the CXL team has been putting many hours of work into this. So this is a very exciting moment for all of us, uh, both project teams and the whole community alike. This year, we were really fortunate at, with uh, the cohort that we awarded the 20 finalist uh, spots to. We had a real global distribution of all of these different teams, a diverse cohort of teams from around the world, 10 teams from North America, one team from South America, two teams from Europe, one team from Africa, three teams from Australia and New Zealand, and three teams from Oceania, Philippines, and Indonesia. And uh, so, as you can tell, it is quite difficult to get everybody onto a call together. And hopefully uh, we've got some people here up very, very late at night, some people here up very, very early in the morning and really appreciate everybody making it to this event. These 20 teams were solving an incredibly wide set of conservation problems, as you'll see a bit later as I go through each one of these solutions with technology ranging across hardware to software, community behavior change, and even synthetic materials. And it's been an incredibly strong cohort of projects. Those projects were judged by an equally impressive panel of judges with expertise in conservation, technology, business, science, and behavior change. The judges for the final stage of the Connex Tech Prize are, from left to right, starting at the top, Asha DeVos, CEO and founder of Ocean Swell, Sergio Estella, Chief Design Officer and Co-Founder of Visuality, Marsha Marsh, former COO of WWF, Daniel Satuniyake, founding Tiny ML engineer at Edge Impulse, Mina Epps, Director of Global Marine and Polar Program at IUCN, Ted Schmidt, Principal Program Officer for Conservation Initiatives at Vulcan, Deidre Gibson, Associate Professor and Chair at the Department of Marine and Environmental Sciences at Hampton University, Eric Birkenpass, Founder of Second Star Robotics, Beth Carlin, Founder and CEO of Sea Change Institute, and Brett Jinks, CEO and founder of Rare Conservation. We're deeply grateful to these judges for contributing their time and expert to these projects. Each year, the Connex Tech Prize features two categories. This year, the first category was behavior change, incentivizing tools or products that use behavior change tactics to drive a positive conservation impact. In past years, we focused our categories on problem areas within conservation, like invasive species. But this year, we wanted to challenge our community of innovators to develop tools using the robust solution toolkit of behavior change tactic and strategies. Our second category is blue sky, which incentivizes any tool or product that creates a significant impact on a clearly defined conservation challenge. We host this second open category because early stage funding can be hard to come by. And we want to be able to create that activation energy that's needed for any project idea to leave the drawing board and come to life in order to build out the entire ecosystem of ventures that are working on conservation challenges. The 20 finalists across these two categories are considered together for the grand prize. So any one of the projects could win the $20,000 grand prize award based on their progress during the prototyping period and the merits of their idea. This year, the finalist projects in the behavior change category were Comp AI, an at-home smart composting solution using a wireless sensor unit to connect your compost bin to the smartphone and your community. Eco Weeders, a decision support tool to help conservation land managers choose non-chemical weed practice management, uh, weed management practices for reforestation and conservation. 
Furs for Life, a bio-based leopard fur solution to replace hunted leopard furs in South African cultural and religious ceremonies. Greenfin's Global Hub, a digital platform to motivate scuba dive operators to improve their daily environmental practices at scale. Green to Go Pizza, an easy to use recyclable pizza box service for restaurants and consumers that reduces non-recyclable waste of pizza boxes. Rigen X Scenario Tool, a digital dashboard and toolkit to improve environmental and social governance and steer investors towards regenerative investments. Sea Level Rise VR Experience, a virtual reality tour that lets people see and feel what sea level rise is going to do to their coastal towns, city, and infrastructure and to help them make better coastal management decisions. Tindigat.ph, a direct fisher to institution online marketplace to connect fishers along the entire supply chain in the Philippines. And in the blue sky category, this year the finalist projects were Airborne DNA a tool for collecting DNA from airborne biological materials containing genetic information like skin or hair, which then continue to persist in the air. Buy-in, using geospatial data tools to match coastal neighborhoods with high conservation potential with conservation financing organizations to transform hazardous real estate into conservation assets. Elements of a super coral, exploring the elemental composition of super corals to learn how to protect coral reefs for the future. Kadi the Coral Guardian, a swarm of underwater automated vehicles with high resolution cameras to map coral reef health and growth. Powerful Seeds, a low cost seed coating platform capable of increasing the efficiency of reforestations around the planet through seed balls for direct sowing. QR code ID from UAV, an animal tracking system using QR codes on the back of sea turtle shells and drones to fly over them to ID the individual animal. Rat Spitfire Kill Device, a smart long life deployment device that attracts, detects, and kills rats. Smart Wildlife Warning Solution, an Internet of Things enabled traffic sign that minimizes roadkill by warning drivers of the animal presence with lights and monitors animal data for ecologists and transportation agencies to better protect wildlife ecosystems. Species Safari Cam, detecting wildlife species on safari using machine learning and vehicle mounted cameras to automate species monitoring through ecotourism. Terrapin Tracker, a low power, lightweight, waterproof tracker for terrapin turtles using LoRaWAN networks. Wild Insect Traffic Sensors, using optics to create a tracking system for wild insects that can be deployed in the wild for effective insect measurements. And Wildlife Trafficking Predictor, an algorithm to cross-reference data on deforestation and wildlife trafficking to help us anticipate wildlife trafficking incidents when deforestation occurs. Before we go on, I'd like to make a personal congratulations to all of the finalist project teams. This year for all of us, I think, has been one of the most challenging years in recent memory. And yet the overall quality of all 20 of these finalist projects that we granted this year was incredibly high. And despite all of the barriers that 2020 has thrown in their way, the outputs at the end of the prototyping period have been truly extraordinary. The prototypes that they completed, the assets that they created, the collaboration with the community, the focus and dedication to their project in this most difficult of years has been really, truly inspiring. So my congratulations to you and thank you for putting in all the hard work through this past 12 weeks and before. But only one team can win the $20,000 grand prize. And so I'm happy to announce that the grand prize winner of the 2020 Connex Tech Prize is Powerful Seeds. Congratulations to Lot Amoros, Daniel Calatiud, Sergio Procama, and Cristobal Campos for winning the grand prize with their open source seed coating reforestation solution. We have Lot Amoros here with us to say a few words and present their project's pitch deck. Lot, I'll be passing the mic over to you in just a few minutes, but before I do, we have one more thing. This year, 
the project quality of work from our finalists was so extraordinary that we decided that a single grand prize award wasn't enough. So we're happy this year to announce two additional grant awards of $5,000 each, the Erasing Extinction Award and the Lemur's Choice Award. The Erasing Extinction Award is presented to a project team that holds the highest potential impact on a single species. This year, we're happy to award the Erasing Extinction $5,000 award to Furs for Life. Congratulations to Jeff Dunnink, Gareth Whittington-Jones, and Tristan Dickerson for their bio-based leopard fur solution to replace hunted leopard furs in South African cultural and religious ceremonies. The Lemur's Choice Award is presented to a high-scoring team that impressed both the judges and the CXL team with high potential for real-world impact, excellent progress during the prototyping period, and use of behavior change levers. This year, we're happy to award the $5,000 Lemur's Choice Award to Greenfin's Global Hub. Congratulations to James Greenhall, Samantha Craven, Juliana Corrales, Melissa Hobson, JJ Harvey, and Chloe Harvey for their scalable digital, digital platform for scuba dive operators to adopt green practices and prevent tourism damage to coral reefs. Now, I'm gonna hand over control to Lot Amoros from the Powerful Seeds team to say a few words and present their pitch deck if we can, and stay tuned afterwards for an announcement about our next big challenge initiative at CXL. Okay, Lot. Uh, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, and I just cut you off as soon as as soon as he said that. There you are. We can hear you now. Fantastic. Uh, so th thank you so much. I mean, it's a it's amazing uh, with all of the incredible projects and amazing projects. I mean, yeah. Uh, we at the end, uh, we didn't think that uh, was possible, but yeah, so thank you so much for the opportunity to bring uh, our machine to the next level. Thank you. Well, we'd love if you could walk us through your pitch deck. Yeah, fantastic. So I, the Zoom tell me that it's not possible to start video. Ah, I can share the screen. Just a second to see that. Yeah, can you see my screen? We can. Fantastic. Yeah, so I will share the pitch deck that we sent to the contest. Uh, it's very simple. Technology to perform large scale, low cost and ecosystem restorations with direct sowing. Because actually with the actual technology, this is like the index of, the, of my speech, but yeah, with the actual technology, it's uh, very difficult to perform uh, large-scale ecosystem re reforestations. No, this is what our technology enable this uh, large-scale restoration. And we was uh, yeah, we was inspired by nature. No, nature does not plant trees; it sows seeds. So why not to follow the yeah the ideas of of nature and replicate their way of reproduction, no? Uh, right now, transplant, transplanting is, is very expensive and it's difficult to, to control. It's, it's expensive mainly because we need to go back to the field and watering the plants. So this is uh, time consuming and requires a lot of resources, a lot of people, no? Uh, also, these uh, problems with seedlings force uh, reforestation organizations to transplant mainly pines. That is the main species that works well with watering. So this complexity force, are forcing the reforestation organizations to make a monoculture and uh, we need biodiversity no? to have a healthy forest. And uh, this is a technology, the seed enhancements, like 
how to work with seeds with different technologies to boost the germination. This is already done in the agricultural industry, like in horticultural seeds like tomatoes and all of the seeds that we eat normally, they have some kinds of treatments to improve and boost their germination. But since uh, there are big companies that have this uh, knowledge by secret, and we would like to open uh, this uh, black box of uh, seed uh, technology. And this is this graphic is like the main uh, the main reason why uh, reforestation by seeds are not uh, performed uh, well in in our world is because there is a failure point a uh, a lack of control in the germination of seeds. So this is why companies go to seedlings and not to seeds because it's uncontrollable, the, the germination and establishment of the seeds in the initial periods. But after the emergence, there is more or less a continuity of survival or an expected survival that we can control. So the problem is in the early steps of the germination of the, of the seeds. So our solution combines different approaches. Uh, we, as I said, we are based in, in nature and we, on, we don't use uh, uh, chemical products or pesticides. We, are, we work with, with nature, with elements that we can find in, in nature. We, are, we would like to build a digital network to share the recipes of the seed balls and also to learn each other. Uh, since we need money to reforestation, we want to make a sustainable project that can grow with the network by workshop of reforestation projects. By doing open source, we would like to make a big impact around the world. Actually, there is some people interested around the world in making the machine already. So we expect that opening by open source, we can actually scale a lot the impact of the reforestation projects around the world by the number of projects and also by their size. These are the three main technologies in this contest. We was focused in coating, that is this adding this layer of uh, different elements to the seed. But there is also priming that some Daniel or colleague is investigating with priming. And also we have some people investigating in microization. This uh, symbiotical combination of uh, fungi and seed balls is very important for the survival and establishment of the, of the seeds. And the coating enables this adding uh, elements by adding, introducing in the formula of coating this, uh, this fungi of microrhiza. Uh, so we believe that direct, direct sowing can reduce cost, can enable this large scale reforestation. Um, yeah, we believe that it's a path that we should follow to enable at large scale the reforestation around the world. Uh, for doing this, this is the machine that we made. This actually is an early working prototype. And we made videos, uh, 3D printable models, schematics, uh, diagrams, uh, 3D printable models that people already can download the files and start replicating the machine because we have everything online. Uh, this uh, machine able the high scalability because in a few hours we can create literally millions of seed balls. So we believe that, that it's a very clever idea to enable this large scale reforestation. Uh, or users of this uh, machine could be NGOs, public or, or private companies that could use this machine to improve the germination and establishment, or also agroforestry agro projects that would like to combine 
a, a traditional species with, with the forest. A, what are doing in the different companies in the world to reforest with some kind of technology? We, we put it here, different approach. Uh, cocoon by Volterra, it's kind of a donut that it's kind of a water tank to to collect water. It call it uh, so it's a way to don't need to watering the seedlings. We also follow the model of Seedballs Kenya that uh, showing us are uh, also are showing to the all the world that seedballs work that they have a very good establishment and survival. So we are trying to replicate their model of recipes to the rest of the world and different ecosystems. And there are different organizations around the world that work with coating for tomatoes, pepinos, and there is also a, a good point to look how the market of seeds in the agriculture in the conventional agriculture established to see what work and what not to move these ideas to the world of of native species and also another alternative is to to our machine is to use kind of chinese machines that um, that are used to coat uh, different uh, eatable uh, ingredients, no, for uh, for kids, then, no, for human consumption. These machines could be adapted to to native seed coating, but we decided to to buy to construct our own machine. And this is our main advantage: we deliver public knowledge, our recipes. It's an open source science because we can do it with other organizations in Spain, or Europe, or across the world. To perform this, we need an open methodology and accessible tools because all the experiments need to be replied in order to assure that it's true that our experiments that are working on the the germination, the expected germination are the same in different experiments. Um, our business model, something that uh, is not written here is that we can also, the machine is open source, we can also sell the machine or invite people to build the machine. We, we, we share the links in different uh, shops that we can earn a little bit percentage, like uh, affiliate links. We can also be sustainable by doing workshops around the world or even online. Now we are more thinking in, the, in online workshops about how to use the machine. And even uh, using the machine, we can be sustainable by doing reforestation projects or also assisting other reforestation projects. Can, these projects can be done by ourselves or also by other people and we can assist them with our technology. This is our team. I'm a computer engineer, Daniel, that is the seed researcher. He's a specialist in priming and coating. Sergio, Sergio that is the, he's the designer of the 3D printing materials and different materials that are used in our machine. And our data scientist and biologist, Cristobal Campos from the University of Alicante. Uh, we started with this idea a long time ago, maybe eight years ago, when, when we started to building these uh, seed balls by hand, following the ideas of Masanobu Fukuoka, the inventor of Nendo Dango seed balls. Then we started to make uh, scientific research. We, we started to also to work with the early prototypes or early ideas of this machine with the cement with a cement mixer so we made a lot of tests we read a lot of uh, scientific 
papers about different materials, and then we had the opportunity to present the machine to this uh, contest. And the next steps are use the machine. Actually, we had the machine, now is the time to use it to create different formulas around 10 or 20 fo different formulas that we will test in the Mediterranean ecosystem to understand what is the best formula for each species and our ecosystem. And then make the reforestation project and even a product with the machine that we can share and sell to other organizations around the world. That's it. We have our seed lab in Spain, in La Alpujarra, in the mountains of uh, Sierra Nevada. Here is where we research with seeds. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your attention. We are very happy and we will share the results, the improvements that we are already doing. Then last uh, weeks we improved with even with already with some formulas that we will start sharing in our social networks. Thank you, thank you so much for your attention. Well, congratulations and thank you so much as well for your incredible work with powerful seeds.